Hello to you, our viewers. We welcome you to this edition of the News in English. My name is Serge Nhori. Let us begin with the headlines. Rwanda and Mali have signed 19 cooperation agreements across various sectors to strengthen bilateral relations and contribute to the development of their people. Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Njirene has addressed delegates at the ongoing fourth Small Islands and Developing States Conference that is taking place in Antigua and Barbuda. On the details, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. As we begin this edition of the news, let us inform you that on Monday at Village Ruguiro, President Paul Kagame received Adule Diop, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mali and Special Envoy, who delivered a message from His Excellency Colonel Asimi Goita, President of the Transition, Head of State of Mali. Let us also inform you that President Paul Kagame received Jean Todd, the UN Special Envoy for, for Road Safety, who today jointly launched with the Ministry of Infrastructure a campaign pro, uh, to promote safe helmets for all motorcyclists in the country. Now, as we noted in the headlines, Rwanda and Mali have signed 19 cooperation agreements across various sectors to strengthen bilateral relations and contribute to the development of their populations. This milestone was achieved on Monday during the conclusion of the first joint permanent commission meeting between the two countries. The meeting was convened to enhance cooperation and solidify their partnership. Olive Nete has more. The agreements signed are in the fields of security, health, culture, agriculture, tourism, technology, mining, justice, education, and the environment, among others. Mali's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah Diop, emphasized the importance of these bilateral relations in driving the development of both countries. Partaging the ambition to come to an Africa in peace, stable, developed. Sharing the ambition to achieve a peaceful, stable, developed, prosperous, autonomous, independent, and sovereign Africa, Mali and Rwanda maintain good political relations as evidenced by the regularity of high-level views and the convergence of views of our two countries on numerous geopolitical issues relating in particular to peace and security. They place particular emphasis on the fight against terrorism and violent extremism, the reform of the global governance, the implementation of the treaty establishing the continent of free trade area, and the emergence of a strengthened African pole capable of negotiating as equals with other actors in multipolar world in multiple challenges. Thanks to the conclusion of our work, we will succeed in increasing the volume of our agreements between our two countries. Minister Abdullah Diop highlighted that Rwanda's consistent support for Mali during challenging times has strengthened their relationship. He emphasized that Africa's development relies on the cooperation among its countries. But also the solidarity agissante que le Rwanda a toujours apporté au Mali sur la scène africaine, sur la scène internationale. I have personally witnessed the continuing ties between our two countries, but also the active solidarity that Rwanda has always shown to Mali, both on the African scene and on the international scene, as a member of the Security Council of the United Nations and the African Union, but also the international level. Above all, I would like to salute President Pokagame's lucid and pragmatic reading of the transition situation of all the political challenges that Mali has always faced. Rwanda has always demonstrated moderation and wisdom by inviting Mali's partners to take a constructive look at the complexity of the challenges Mali faces. Unfortunately, many of our brothers in Africa have not yet understood that our fates are linked and that no country will march from this situation without other countries. Peuvent constituer des reculs de demain, donc il est important que nous puissions renforcer la solidarité entre nos pays. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Rwanda, Dr. Vincent Piruta, expressed that the cooperation between the two countries strengthens the development of both nations. Le Rwanda et le Mali entretiennent d'excellentes relations diplomatiques 
Rwanda and Mali have good diplomatic relations and we are happy to observe the positive development in this area in recent years. We can notably cite the opening of the Mali Embassy in Kigali in 2017, as well as the signing of three framework agreements in September 2023, which laid foundations for the strengthening our cooperation. These achievements illustrate our commitment to building a strong and mutually beneficial partnership. Rwanda and Mali share many points in common. Our countries aspire to economic progress and greater cooperation and solidarity across the continent. We are also united by a common vision of inclusive, sustainable, and collaborative development based on mutual respect and mutual assistance. Inclusive, durable, and collaborative, based on respect mutual and entraide. In 2023, Rwanda and Mali signed three agreements, including Air Services Agreement, an agreement establishing a joint commission between the two countries, and the Cooperation Framework Agreement. This marks the first meeting of the joint commission. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive. Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Njirene has addressed delegates at the ongoing Fourth Small Islands and Developing States Conference that is taking, that is taking place in Antigua and Barbuda until Thursday. He delivered a national statement on the conference theme entitled Charting Course Towards Resilient Prosperity. I would like to also to express Rwanda's solidarity to Papua New Guinea after the loss of lives of several people due to the recent the devastating landslides. Excellencies, I commend the regularity of this conference and this regularity show the commitment of all, all member states to address these urgent and most pressing challenges that uh, different nations face today. As we chart course to, towards our resilient as countries, Rwanda believes that uh, small islands and developing states deserve a special attention as they are most vulnerable to climate effects. In this context, I would like to highlight a few important points to reflect on as we collectively move to concrete actions. First, with regard to prospect of our people, we, are, we all agree that potential for prosperity for all is huge and very much untapped. The natural wealth of our planet, especially of the small islands, developing state is evident. We only, need, we only need actions to realize this huge potential into real prosperity. Equally important, our nations need to build the right and the strong partnerships to ensure that our populations, particularly the most vulnerable ones, enjoy better lives and the prosperity. Second, with regard to resilience, it is true that our nations keep losing, losing years of effort and sometimes decades of development to shocks of various types. In particular, for small island developing states, climate shocks have become, in many, instance, in many instances, an existential threat. For us to win the battle toward the resilience, we need to scale up and consolidate our resilience investment effort. To achieve this, our countries must foster innovative solutions and, and the knowledge sharing and designing and building infrastructure that can withstand climate change driven threats. Excellencies, the development priorities and the goals of small islands developing, developing states are clearly articulated in major global frameworks. Therefore, if climate agenda and finance are to work for, for the world, it is a necessary condition that they work first for the most vulnerable small island developing states. In the face of climate shocks, small islands developing states have often assumed the leading role 
in the global agenda, even outpacing many other countries. This has been obvious not only in advancing climate agenda, but also in advancing for in advocating for the reform of the financial architecture and develop, development financing to cite only those. We acknowledge and thank you for this leadership. We want to assure you that uh, this leadership is not lost on us. In Rwanda, we believe in solidarity and in partnership that are mutual benef mutually beneficial. In fact, in terms of climate vulnerability and financing needs, there are similarities between landlocked countries and small island states. We can work together to advocate for a more responsive and uh, inclusive international financing architecture. As I conclude, I wish to underscore that there is a lot more potential today than ever before. Much effort are needed to leverage the potential return of investment in people, especially the youth, as, as well as the potential return of fair global trade and technological progress to advance economies. With broader commitment and sense of urgency, let us strengthen our partnership and the cooperation for the better future of our island and the planet. Once again, I would like to highlight that we are here because we believe that a small island needs sp special attention and special treatment. Dr. Edouard Ngirene, the Prime Minister of Rwanda, addressing delegates at the ongoing Fourth Small Islands and Developing States Conference in Antigua and Barbuda. Now, to matters here at home, Pierre Simberakuri has submitted to the National Electoral Commission a list of 80 candidates for the July parliamentary elections. The list includes 43 women. Adam Squizier has more. Online, the candidates contesting for positions in the elections of the head of seats and the members of parliament in the Chamber of Deputies continue to submit their candidacy at the headquarters of the National Electoral Commission. However, the number of submissions has significantly decreased compared to the last few weeks as explained by the president of the commission, Oda Gasinzigwa. At the beginning of May 17th and the following weeks, numerous candidates came to submit their candidacy. However, as the deadline approaches, the number decreased, though some continue to arrive. In the women's category, we've received a significant number of candidacies, with around 20 to 30 submissions daily. The president of the base in Berakuri noted that they have decided to do what they can and follow their own path, emphasizing that their contribution to building the country will increase. Having more than two members of parliament would signify a significant achievement that we are striving for. Currently, our focus is on campaigning for parliament seats, and we trust that people will make their choices accordingly on the other matters. The deadline for the candidacy submissions is set for May 30th. Afterwards, the provision list of candidates from all categories will be announced. Those who haven't fulfilled their requirements, by then, but have valid reasons, we have an additional five days to address them. This ensures that they still have a chance to be included on the list of the candidates to run the elections of the head of state and the 80 deputies who will govern the country for a five-year term. Adam Squizdera, RTV News. Thank you, Adams. As the Rwandan presidential and parliamentary elections approach, young Rwandans who will be voting for the first time are expressing their excitement about participating. Charlene Furaha with the details. Honorine is a young Rwandan preparing to vote for the first time. For her, this is a historic and decisive moment, making her entry into the active civic life of her country. She expresses her motivation and expectations for these elections. Uh, voting for the first time is, um, this is a very joyous moment, a moment of happiness, a moment of celebrating, a moment where um, we are given uh, a space to choose our candidate, to choose whoever will present us 
uh, within and outside of the country. Uh, my expectations are um, to be well led to the future. Some Rwandan youth say that voting for the first time is not only a civic duty, but also a symbol of commitment to the future of Rwanda. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm very happy that for the first time I'm going to take part in the elections. I'm going to vote for someone whom I believe they're capable of bringing us from somewhere and take us somewhere else even much better. Considering that the youth is the majority within our country and most of the countries, I think it's a very good part to consider them because their voices really matter and in fact they are well educated, they know what is good for them and putting them within that position that they can vote is a very big uh, chance for them to express what they really believe is good for them and for their country. As a youth, this election uh, period we are going in, uh, it means a lot to me. It means that I have a role in uh, uh, building my country as a youth. Youth uh, hold more than 60% uh, uh, po of population of Rwanda. So that means that uh, if uh, we vote wisely, if we uh, vote like we, who we know or who we know that is really going to make it and do uh, what we want them to do, uh, this is going to make a huge impact in this uh, country because uh, so far all the decisions that are going to be made in the future, they are going to tackle and uh, touch this big number of uh, youth uh, here in Rwanda. The Rwandan population is predominantly young with over 60% of youth. The country is preparing for presidential elections scheduled for July this year. The energy and enthusiasm of young Rwandans are promising signs for a growing Rwandan democracy. Charlene Furaha, RTV News. Thank you, Shangman. Now, motorcyclists have been urged to use new quality helmets in order to protect themselves from head, uh, from head injuries in cases of accidents. We have the details with Cedric Kirakosi. It is a part of a campaign called Tuurinde, which is joined by various institutions, including the Ministry of Infrastructures, the Rwanda National Police, and Rwanda Standard Board. It was after a study showed that the ones that were normally used didn't meet their necessary standards to protect the human head when there is an accident. Motorcyclists have praised the new helmets for their peace of mind. Our common helmet has slow quality standards and others were too old. But now it is very important to us because the new helmets are very comfortable. As we have seen, this helmet has different size and it will help us women who have any kind of hairstyle to wear of it and still feel comfortable. The National Rwanda Police spokesman, ACP Boniface Rutikanga, said that the head is the engine of the human body and it is very important to protect it. I think if you want to protect your beauty, try another transport. Instead of not wearing motorcyclist helmet properly, which is very dangerous to cause an accident. The Director General of RSP, Morenzi Raymond, explains that these helmets are hardy and not perishable. We hope that this helmet has full package and high quality standard and also protecting the part of the head. The representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations for Road Safety, Jean Told, indicates that there are more than 5 million accidents in the world every year and they want to reduce this number by 2030. This campaign was launched to use this Hamet International Standards of UN ECE 2206. Initially, 500 kits will be distributed and the campaign will continue in other parts of the country. Cedric Irakose, RTV News. Thank you, Cedric. Now, 80 students, that is university students from various Commonwealth countries, have participated in debates held here in Kigali. The Commonwealth and organizers of the event have noted that this is an opportunity for the youth in upscaling their leadership potential. Prince Manzi with more. These 87 students from 12 universities in various Commonwealth countries appreciate this initiative. 
The world belongs to us. 10, 20 years from now, we're going to be the decision makers and live with the consequences of decisions made today. Whether it's climate change, whether it's wealth inequality or gender, wage gap, gender gaps, wage gaps, classism, all of these issues. So having spaces where youths can discuss and take part in the problem solving experience is always crucial to creating a better and more sustainable future. We are looking forward to uh, do our best uh, in this tournament and uh, make sure that this, this tournament is a success. And uh, big thanks to Commonwealth for providing this platform and um, hoping to see that this initiative would go forward and looking forward to see this event annually. This is the first time such a tournament is taking place and it started in Rwanda. The executive director of the Aspire debate, David Nambie, reiterates that this is an opportunity for upscaling the youth. A very good opportunity for us to tap into that particular resolution so in that manner the championship was put in place at least for people to articulate on the recommendations of Chogam and, uh, and, and get to know more of the intention and the benefits that come alongside the Commonwealth so we at least at the end of this championship we anticipate to hear more people um, have a clear understanding of what Commonwealth is all about what opportunities can they fetch as young people? What opportunities that align from a national context to a Commonwealth perspective? So that's one of uh, the main objectives. But two, also, it's good for students to uh, have that global engagement, you know, to test their abilities, specifically the national students. When they meet the international, then they can test their abilities. How are we and how are we standing? It is a tournament that is part of the Year of Youth, declared by the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in 2022, held in Kigali, Rwanda. Nazi Amin, the project manager of the Year of Youth, reiterates that this tournament is essential in connecting, upskilling and supporting the youth as the future leaders. When we set out to kind of create the agenda for the Year of Youth, we set out with four E's energize, empower, envision and engage. We wanted to do all four for young people and I think this event embodies all four of them because it's energizing young people to understand debating, it's empowering them to use their voices, um, it's helping them to envision a renewed commonwealth. So for us this event is special um, and it's truly remarkable that we're here in Rwanda all the way when Chogum decided the year of youth, we're back here to celebrate um, an event like this. Topics to debate are part of those slated for discussions in the upcoming Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting to be held in Samoa. The debate will be held in teams and Rwanda is represented by three universities. Thank you, Prince Manzi, for that report. Now, more than 1,400 high school students here in Rwanda have began participating in the program of international student assessment with students from over 80 other countries. This assessment aims to evaluate their knowledge on the global stage and to determine the standard of Rwanda's education system compared to other countries. Adam Squizera with the details. The first international assessment is administered to 15-year-old high school students focusing on science, arts and math. Dr. Bahati Bernard, the Director General of the National Examination and School Inspection Authority, NISA, expressed that this assessment will help to determine the status of Rwanda's education on the international stage. When we conduct this assessment alongside other countries, we use high standard tools, allowing us to learn from their methods of preparing assessments. Various school principals where this evaluation was initiated have stated that previous evaluations did not provide a clear image of their school standings compared to other countries. This PISA emerged as a response to evaluate the proficiency of our students across various education domains such as science, math and arts. It aims to assess the standards of our education system on an international level rather than confining our evaluation within the country. The Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Ireri Kodet, expressed that this initiation of this assessment is expected to yield significant results. The program aims to evaluate students uniformly to gauge the standard of our students, assessing their proficiency in English, math and science. This international assessment was launched on a pilot basis in 45 schools with 1,440 students aged 15. 
organized by the International Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is joined by 80 countries and it is expected to start successfully in June 2025. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Now, families in Musanze district with malnourished and stunted children have received lessons on proper nutrition. These sessions facilitated by the village kitchen serve as a vital resource in safeguarding the health of their children. Adam Squizera once more. Kalisa Emanuel family situated in the village of Gozure within the Chavarika Sao. The Mohoza sector has established a village kitchen where 16 children grappling with malnutrition issues gather. Some of the parents of the children are relieved that their children have progressed beyond severe malnutrition, as indicated by the red mark. My child was experiencing stunting, but thanks to the support of the government of Rwanda, he was able to recover. I'm truly grateful for the assistance in my child's recovery. In this village kitchen, healthcare workers monitor the children and teach parents how to prepare a balanced diet. We're teaching them how to prepare balanced diets for their children and they're actively attending their sessions. Over the last two weeks, we've noticed that significant improvements in their understandings. These campaigns come at a crucial time with the district administration and various partners launching a two-week initiative to address the issue of over 300 mothers and the begging children identified them in the district. 16 kitchens across all sectors of the district will be utilized for this endeavor. That's the news. We thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We'll be seeing you again soon. From all of us here, goodbye.